Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Predator 1 6th scale figure unboxing and review video. Now today we are finally taking a look at none other than Wolf Predator based off his appearance in AVP Requiem. Not the best movie but so many of you all commented on my previous Pred video saying Justin, when are you going to review the Wolf Predator? Well, today is that day. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button for more info on Justin's Collection Plus, the channel membership. As for the box art, I really like it. Up top, Aliens vs Predator Requiem, then of course, a massive image of the figure himself, front and center. Down below, Wolf Predator in brackets, heavy weaponry, then of course, his name wrapping its way all the way around the front of the box, up onto the other side as well. On the back, we do have a bunch of warnings and legal info, plus a massive shot of his biomask. Now, I'm pretty sure that's the figure himself once again. Now, if you do slide off the top cover, you get a sneak preview of the figure, but you'll know, we aren't here for sneak previews. Y'all have waited long enough to see what this guy looks like in hand. And honestly, I have too. I have been so darn excited to get this figure in. You all have told me this is the one. This is Hot Toys' best Predator. At the very least, it's their most recent one. And so far, so good. I am loving the way this guy looks. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of his accessories, and there are quite a few, laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, you all know I love diorama bases when they're done well. Now on one side we've got two footprints where the predator is supposed to sand, a couple of rocks and sand. Now I don't quite recall this predator going to the beach, but then again I could be misremembering. Either way, it's well sculpted, there's a ton of texture here, plus multiple layers of paint and washers in the crevices. But on the other side, we've got a dead xenomorph with guts and entrails spewing out the side. They're glossy, they're wet looking, and of course they're done in a nice vibrant green. Now one of the gut sections is in between this footprint and it does look like it's been squished. That's real nasty, but it works perfectly for a dead xeno. Now the sculpt for the xenomorph is just okay. It's rather soft, the detail isn't super sharp, and the paint applications are also just okay. It's done in black with some lighter silver dry brushing, and the same thing can be said for the teeth area. Now you can actually pose him with his foot up on top of this, and you will see that a little bit later. You do also have a regular crotch grabber, which normally would be perfectly fine, but the Predator is big and really heavy. Plus, this thing doesn't really peg into the base super securely, so it is a little bit more cumbersome to work with. Now that doesn't mean I hate the display base, I don't, I actually really like it. From a distance, it looks great. Now he does come with the combi stick, it's telescopic, meaning yes, you can extend it out, but the spikes are rather prickly, so when you're collapsing it down, do be very careful not to spike yourself. Now this can holster on his back, and you will see that a little bit later. How's it painted? It's painted well. The middle sections are done in this dark gold, you've got multiple silver sections, they're metallic, and they're also absolutely filthy. This thing's got dirt and grime on the surface, it's got pitting. What I'm trying to say is it's super weathered. When it comes to plasma casters, we get multiple options. Starting off with the fully articulated armature version first, you've got multiple joints that are either swivels and hinges or ball joints, as you can see right there, mine unfortunately is a little loose. I am worried about this peg right here though. With Dean Knight's version, it fell out constantly and wouldn't peg in securely. So I'm hoping on mine, it's just that little bit more of a positive connection so it locks in position. Up front, you do have this piece that can move forward and back, and I like the way it's painted. You've got copper sections with this subtle patina wash, then for the main body, it's done in a nice metallic silver, and you have multiple washers, you guessed it, in the crevices to bring out all that detail. 
The handheld version looks exactly the same for the top section, but down below we now have a fully articulated handle. I don't know why it goes all the way up, but it absolutely does. The handle is painted in the same way as the main body, meaning metallic silver, with a ton of oil stain and dirt and grime in all that detail. Yeah, once again, I have no complaints with how these pieces are painted. This, however, I kind of do have a problem with. It's his throwing disc, it's plastic, and vacuum metalized chrome. Now the panel lines are painted. I like that. The gold looks good, the sculpt is sharp, although vacuum metalized chrome is kind of cheap feeling. The plastic does feel brittle, it's not really all that spiky either. Hot toys. Why is this thing not metal? If you could make his gauntlet blades out of metal, and yeah, okay, they're chrome as well, but you can tell as soon as you touch them. These are the real deal, whereas this simply isn't. As for whips, just like the Plasma Caster, multiple options, although one is solely meant for display, whereas this one is meant for posing. Now the display version is all spooled up, it's also done in silver, there are also washers in the crevices. But for the handle, we've got a little bit of brown and some metallic blue down below. It is, as I said, spooled up. It's a lot smaller than the actual whip. So for this, you kind of have to suspend your disbelief just a little. He also has this velvet-like strap and a teeny tiny little hook that slots into his belt and holds this in position. Kinda sorta, but also not really. This is one of the worst attachment methods I've ever seen Hot Toys implement, and I'll show you what I mean on the figure once again later on. As for the fully poseable one, it's on a wire and it's really big. Now you do have multiple holes, which is the telltale sign that this would be articulated rubber. Seeing as though it is rubber and the segments do look rather thin in between the linkages, I would be very, very careful. This is a figure from 2019. This thing has been sitting around since then, so if it starts to get a little bit brittle, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever. It's also painted in silver. There are also washers over the top. Then the handle is done in the exact same way as the other whip, although this one is a little bit more rigid because... It's meant to be held by Wolf Predator. Technically, these aren't really accessories. They're more like parts of the outfit, but you get the cleaner kit. Of course you do, and his med kit. Now, they both slide onto the back of him by these little clips. This one is done in this softer rubbery plastic, whereas this one feels a little bit more brittle. Now, they don't hold on super securely. You'll see what I mean. Don't you worry. They're painted in kind of the same style as the weapons and the rest of the armor. They look metallic, they look weathered, and they look filthy. Now, this one, the bed kit, doesn't actually open. It's one solid hunk, but the cleaner kit absolutely does. You can see some hinges on the sides that are a little bit unsightly, but for me, this is going on his back anyway. It's not the biggest deal in the world. You can open up these little doors and slide the bottom piece out. And oh yes, all the goodies are tucked on the inside. You can remove them. The syringe is a separate piece. So too is the handle that would have been used to create the plasma caster blaster. And you also have the blue goop that he uses to dissolve the Xenos. You don't have to install this in the cleaner kit all the time. If you wanted to, there is a slot on Predator that you can have this stored in. And yeah, I think for me, that's what I'm going to do. Unlike previous Predator figures where the wrist blades slid out and kind of got longer as you pulled them out of the gauntlet, this time you have two options. You have to slide them in yourself. You've got smaller ones for when they're stowed away and much larger ones. They are super sharp and yes, they're made of real metal. I don't really want to spend a ton of time looking at the mandibles here. I'd much rather look at them on the figure, but the reason I left them out is because you only get one set. You don't have closed mandibles, you only have the open screaming ones. Why? I would have absolutely loved to have had multiple options, like they've done in the past, but with this guy, as I said, you only get one. Speaking of only getting one, we also only get one pair of extra hands. Why? Why do we not have the splayed out hands and the pointing hands so we can interact with the gauntlet? Oh no, Hot Toy said, give them some gripping hands and some closed fists, they'll be perfectly fine. But it 
kind of isn't, seeing as the design is so unique here with one bare hand done in this kind of green flesh with the spiky nails, and the other wearing this knuckle duster, it's not like we can give this guy hands from other Predator figures, because as I said, this design is super unique for Wolf. I do like the way they're painted, they look slick and glossy, plus these knuckle duster sections look like they mean business. What we are going to do now though, is get Wolf Predator himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses, but wearing almost all of his accessories. Oh, he looks so freaking good. Now bear with me for just a moment, I'm gonna set the scene. So imagine it's 2019, I've just started my YouTube channel not that long ago, I hadn't seen AVP Requiem, I have now, please nobody freak out. I decided, yeah, Wolf Predator, how good could it be? I'm going to pass, I do not need another Predator in the display. I was so darn wrong. Thank you to everyone who commented on my Pred video saying Justin. Classic is good. City Hunter is good, so is Scar, but Wolf Predator is the one to get. You were right, he absolutely was. I love the way this guy looks. He's so incredibly different from the other Preds. He's tall, he's lanky, his skin color is green. And he does come with a bunch of weaponry. I cannot wait to now compare this guy back to the other Predators and see how different he really is. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the bio mask first. It's new, but also kinda classic at the same time. I can't be the only one that sees the jungle hunter here, at least from the crest down. It looks really retro. Now the nose section is very scratched. You've got some mesh for the eyes with this glossy overlay. The little three dot pred targeting sensor isn't light up this time, Perfectly fine with me, the light up never worked on the previous figures anyway. Up top you've got these horned head crest sections on both sides, then in the middle a bunch of scripture. It's painted in gunmetal with multiple washers and of course some silver dry brushing on the surface. Now from the side profile it's very angled. This top section is kind of tilted a little bit more forward and maybe that's why his head looks slightly Big. That was one of the main complaints that I had, but in person it's not a huge deal and it is something different as compared to the other Predators. Now he does have these rubber cables that do thread their way through the dreadlocks and plug in on the back here. Super hard to do, take your time and thread them through carefully then plug them in after maybe heating up this back panel just a little. And trust me, they will go in, as I said, just take your time. With the bio mask removed, oh, this is one ugly figure. Now starting off with the dreadlocks first, they're a little bit thinner, they're still made of that rubbery plastic, and they drape really well. I was worried they were going to stick out and be all kinds of boofy and poofy like the first version of the Wolf Predator was. No such issue, as I said, they look good. He also has actual proper quills which do feel like really brittle plastic. Once again, another warning, please be careful. You also have a bunch of quills along the top on both sides, although this side has slightly more, because of course, on the left side, his face has been eaten away by acid. Potentially by fighting Xenos, but yeah, one side is a lot more weathered or damaged than the other. You can see all the sinewy tissue detail up the top, and there's a ton more along the side, plus he's missing one tooth here, where on the other side he simply isn't. Now he only gets one set of mandibles, but they are removable. In case for some weird reason you wanted to add or change the mandibles from a previous Pred figure, yeah, you can totally try it. Now one thing that's slightly inaccurate here is his left eye is supposed to be a lot more milky. Because he was acid burned on one side, that eye is now blind, but here they've painted both eyes, it looks like identically. Now I could be wrong and I've looked at the wrong reference, but from everything I've seen, yeah, Wolf Predator is supposed to have one milky eye and one normal one. He's also currently wearing his necklace with multiple trophies. I 
don't know if I'm going to keep this on permanently, because it kind of sits up a little high. It impacts articulation, and it makes his neck look a little short. Around the back, you do have a clip for his combi stick, which is articulated, although the clip itself, just like with Scar Predator, is really ugly. I was hoping it would be some kind of in-universe looking clip, but it isn't. It's just unpainted, glossy black plastic. You do have his cleaner kit, which sits on really loosely, and the same thing can be said for the med kit. If you simply touch it, it's going flying, and you can imagine how annoying that is when you try and pose Wolf Predator. On one side, we do have a plasma caster. It's permanently attached on a ball joint and multiple hinges. Now, the plasma caster on mine is a little floppy. It's not ideal. I do plan on tightening it up, but for now, yeah, it kind of has a mind of its own when it comes to posing. On the other side, if y'all know about Wolf Pred, y'all know he has another plasma caster. This guy can dual wield like an absolute weapon. This one simply snaps on, and luckily mine is nice and secure. The ball joint is still a little bit floppy, but yeah, this is exactly how I'm going to have my figure in the display. Both plasma casters and ready to kick some serious Xeno butt. His upper torso is pretty much fully exposed, it's very well sculpted, and you have some little spikes actually protruding out of the main torso. Now these spikes are really prickly, it seems like a lot of stuff on this figure is simply out to get you, you've got wrist blades, you've got spikes, you've got quills. Just I know I've said this a ton, please be really careful both not to damage the figure and not to damage yourself. Now the skin is done in this light green, you've got dark green sections and over the top, this real fabric netting. Now the fabric netting does feel a little bit thinner as compared to the other Preds, and on certain sections it's a little bit baggier for maximum range of motion. On one side you've got this armor plating with this rubbery hose, on the other, this leather-like harness, but oh no, it's not pleather. This is fully sculpted out of hard rubber. But it looks like pleather, it's got the grain, it's got the texture, it's got the paint. Then over the top, you've got this bandolier with these little sections around the front. And as I said in the accessory segment, you've got a little spot for his blue goop that he uses to clean up the Xenos. The pred blades are simple enough to remove. You simply slide out the smaller ones, spiking your thumb as you do, bring in the longer ones and slide them back in. They lock in place nice and securely. Now it's entirely up to you which one do you want to go with, but for me, the longer ones are absolutely working here. The gauntlets are done in gunmetal. You can see they're slightly metallic. There's some silver dry brushing, plus, of course, washes in those crevices. Now, coming up to the arm, the skin texture looks good. There's some scarring up top, multiple different colours. It's glossy looking. And this time, they've actually painted that elbow joint, so it's not just that glossy, ugly, unpainted plastic. On the other side, he, of course, has his Predator self-destruct sequence with the screens fully printed. You've got some silver dry brushing inside, on the underside of the lid, unnecessary but really cool. Then on the outside, you've got multiple little screens printed as well. I do like how sturdy this hinge is, it's not going to flop around like other things on this figure. He does have netting on this arm versus the other that simply doesn't, and a shoulder pad. Unfortunately, there is a pleather strap here, and on mine, it's already come loose. I don't love pleather, you all know this. I don't know how long this pleather strap is going to last, I'm going to have to tuck it up under and glue it in position. Because as it stands, it's supposed to go up under here, but yeah, it's completely loose. Luckily though, the belt area has no pleather. Hot Toys Predator figures have suffered from pleather degrading issues a lot. I have a couple that are coming up very soon for review that unfortunately have died completely. The pleather has flaked off. This, however, is rubbery plastic, 
It's sturdy, it's well sculpted, and it's really nicely painted. It looks like leather wood, it's got these tassels down below, multiple armoured sections, and something's lower jaw. That could be a Xeno, I don't know, but I really like it. You also have some Predator discs attached with this little string, you've got multiple all the way around the belt, and of course, his whip. Now this teeny tiny metal clip goes into a teeny tiny little hole, and it falls out constantly. If he's just standing there, yeah, okay, it's secure. But as you can see, it flops around, and eventually, it works its way out of that little hole right there. I would have preferred magnets or a permanent clip to actually lock it in position, because as it stands, yeah, I think this is a pretty poor attachment method for something that's rather heavy, like this whip. Moving down to the legs, Hot Toys being Hot Toys, they had to include just a little bit more pleather. You do have some straps around the back of his thigh armor, luckily the armor itself is glued on. So even if these pleather straps eventually degrade, then I don't think these are going anywhere. I like the sculpt, they look pitted, they're metallic, and they're also very well weathered. The skin is also sculpted nicely, you've got a couple of spikes on either side. They are a little bit prickly, as I said earlier, it seems like this figure is out to get you, because no matter which joint you're moving, something is there to spike you. Around the back of his calves, spikes. Down here for his feet, spikes once again. And they're not that soft, rubbery plastic either, these are really prickly. You do have even more armor for his boots, it's done in the same style as these pieces right here, I think it looks really good. The feet do have a little bit of exposed reptilian looking flesh, but around the front, some massive spikes, and then underneath, even though it looks relatively simple, you do have some fully sculpted tread. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Classic Predator on the right, standing in for now as my jungle hunter. I'm pretty sure you all know what that means, and then the Wolf Predator on the left. As you can see, Wolf is taller, his neck is longer, his proportions are lankier, overall he looks completely different. And that's the best part about these Predator figures is, no two are really identical. If you're getting a different Pred from a different movie, you can be darn sure that it's going to look different and unique and stand out in the display. Which one do I prefer between these two? I don't know, I like them both. I know, such a cop-out answer. The classic looks so darn classic, terrible I realize, but Wolf is just an absolute badass with so many weapons, and that bio mask looks incredible. Next up, here we have Predator 2's City Hunter, and everything I just said still applies. He looks completely different once again. The color scheme, the way the armor looks, the netting, the size and amount and thickness of the dreads, plus that head sculpt, yeah, it's very unique between City Hunter and Wolf. Once again, can't pick my favorite. I'm so sorry. You're probably also wondering, ooh, is he going to bring out every single Pred in the collection and do a comparison? Unfortunately, I can't, because we'd be here forever. But in the future for an upcoming collection tour, don't worry, I will show you my brand new Predator display, because I'm pretty happy with the way it looks so far. Going over articulation, do bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Starting off with the head sculpt, normally they're on a fixed neck, but not this time. There's a ball joint at the base of the head and another at the base of the neck. Combined going forward to there, going back to there, although it does get a little gappy. Swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there, although a little bit higher on this side, because there's no shoulder pad or plasma caster. Going forward and back, single bend at the elbow that also incorporates a swivel. You do have a regular 1-6 scale wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot side to side. The legs go forward to there, going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh, single bend at the knee that does get you to about 90, and of course, a double ball peg down here for the ankle. Wrapping up on Hot Toys Wolf Predator from AVP Requiem. Going into this, I was excited, but I thought, you know, how good can this figure really be? Well, it turns out, 
He's fantastic. He's now my best Predator figure in the collection. But it's worth noting, there is a difference between best and favourite. Now, my favourite is still either the classic or the City Hunter, but this guy comes in a really close third. But technically speaking, he comes with more stuff, the articulation is better, the paint applications are superior, he's got quills on his head sculpt, it looks accurate to the movie. Overall, he's a better figure. So if you're putting together a Predator display and you're thinking, do I really need Wolf? Yes. Yes, you do. Even if you don't like the film, but you want a truly spectacular Pred figure, this is it right here. I said it earlier, but I'm gonna say it again. Thank you so much to the people who commented constantly saying, Justin, you need this figure. I got around to picking him up. You all were right. I was wrong. He is well worth getting. In saying all of that, though, is he a perfect figure? No. He's still got some pleather strap issues, the med kit and the cleaner kit falls off all the time, and even though his articulation is better than the other Preds, he's still a little bit limited when it comes to getting into those more dynamic poses. Does that ruin the entire figure for me? No, absolutely not. I still love this figure. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Do bear in mind though, he's an older figure, meaning he's going to be really pricey. I have warned you, but I have popped the link in the description below. They have installment plans and a points-based reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.